Welcome to C3 Alive Church Online. We are a multi-site church in Uganda. We have four locations. C3 Alive Kabalagala, C3 Alive Matuga, C3 Alive Kasese, and C3 Alive Buera. This service is going to do you good. Please follow it to the end. You will be blessed. Come on, let's go right into this incredible service. We lift him higher. When we lift him, he will show up and bring healing to Allah. We will prosper, we will flourish, we will flow in his blessing and rejoice in his riches. We will shout in victory and sing of what the Lord has done. the Lord saints of God I'm honored to be sharing the word of God with you today I'm gonna to be sharing from a subject that I've called fear not fear not come on let us pray father in the mighty name of Jesus I want to thank you because today in the ministering of the word you're driving out fear and your word is creating faith in us Thank you, Jesus. You're giving us a spirit of boldness. You're giving us a spirit of newness. And you're giving us a sound mind. Thank you for everyone who is listening to me right now. I pray that your word will fulfill the purpose to which you've sent it. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Fear not. The Bible says in Luke chapter 21, starting with verse 25 and then verse 26, it says, and there will be signs in the sun, in the moon, and in the stars, and on the earth distress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring, men's hearts failing them from fear, and the expectation of those things which are coming on the earth, for the powers of the heavens will be shaken. The Bible says, in the last days, men's hearts will fail them because of fear. People will be terrified because of the things that are coming up on the earth. Fear can stop hearts. Fear stops communities. Fear stops nations. Fear is a spirit. Fear is a spirit. Actually, the Bible says in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7, it says, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Fear is a spirit. Fear is one of the weapons of the enemy. And let me tell you, the devil uses a lot of things, but he uses them as avenues to breathe fear on us so that we don't walk in faith. The opposite of boldness, the opposite of faith is fear. Fear is a spirit. Just as God moves when we walk in faith, the devil also moves when we walk in fear. So when we are in fear, we are activating the power of the enemy over our lives. The Bible says our adversary, the devil, is always moving around like a roaring lion, seeking whom he might devour, seeking whom he might devour. When they say whom he might devour, they are meaning that he doesn't devour everyone. But as he roars, as he roars, as he roars, when we react to the fear that he breathes on us, then he gets a hold of us, then he devours us. But also, it means there are those people that he can't devour. And these are the people who know who they are. These are the people who know what they have. And they are the people who know what God has made them. 
There are those who react with fear and run away and flee and their hearts stop and they can't even take a step because of the devil's roar. If they are like that, if we continue to be like that, then the devil will devour us. The devil uses sicknesses in order to bring us to places of fear. The devil uses pandemics and calamities and problems and trouble in order to keep us in a place of fear. And when we are in the place of fear, we are actually seated in the position where our enemy wants us. When we are afraid, we can't pray. When we are in fear, we forget who we are in God. When we are in fear, we forget what we have in God. When we walk in fear, we can't even praise God. When we walk in fear, we can't worship God the way we should worship him. The devil binds us by fear. Let me tell you, we can protect ourselves from COVID-19 by masking, by washing hands. However, you can't mask fear off. You can't sanitize fear off. <laughs> you can't do it. And I see today that there's a lot of pressure, a lot of pressure in our nation, a lot of pressure in the nations of the world caused by the pandemic. But what I've also realized is this, is that fear actually is becoming more destructive than the pandemic itself. That even when some people are tested positive with COVID-19 and you call them, they will tell you, I'm not feeling a lot of pain or a lot of sickness, but what I have is fear. And then those who are not yet sick are so scared. They are moving in fear even more than the sick. That is the weapon of the enemy in order to hold us in the same place where we can't again look at the promises of God. The roaring of the enemy around us is so loud, so loud, it's so loud on television, it's so loud in newspapers, it's so loud on social media that we can't settle down and be still and hear what God is speaking to us. The TV has spoken. The scientists have spoken. The doctors have spoken. They have given us great advice, good precautionary measures. But have we also listened to what God is saying? Have we listened to what the Spirit of God is speaking to the church? As the whole world walks in fear and uncertainty and perplexity, as the hearts of people shut down, as people get confused, what is the church doing? We have a secret weapon. Our faith must prevail. The Bible actually talks in 1 Corinthians 13, it talks about the three powerful things. It talks about hope, it talks about faith, it talks about love. The Bible says, and these three remain, faith, hope, and love. And, and you know the greatest of these is love. Right now I'm talking about faith. Faith is a great weapon. We can lose everything. We, we can even lose our, our health. We can lose our body. We can, we can lose our money. But there is one thing we should guard jealously. That's our faith. Paul said, I've fought a good fight. I've finished my course. I have kept the faith. I have kept the faith. Jesus is the author of our faith. Looking unto Jesus the author and the finisher of our faith. This one ingredient that we should keep in all seasons is our faith. Because when we walk in boldness, when we walk in faith, we activate the power of God in our lives. The Bible says without faith, it is impossible for us to please God. And if we are simply feeding on information from TV, if we are simply feeding on the fears, the terrors of the world, then we are about to be lunch for the enemy. Let me teach you one lesson about a lion. When a group of lions is about to attack, maybe antelopes, what they do is the strong lions gather in one corner and they hide. And then they get a weak, old, toothless lion and they put him in another corner because this weak, toothless lion actually can't charge, can't go on. However, this weak, toothless lion does one thing. He rose. He rose and he rose. Now, this is what happens. When the prey, if they are antelopes, hear the roar, 
they run away from the row. And when they are running away from the row, they end up going into the direction of this other herd of lions that has been waiting to eat them up. That is exactly what the enemy does. He uses fear, he uses the roar in order to get a reaction, a response from us which is negative, a response which is anti the word of God. And when we respond to the roar, now we are susceptible to the attacks of the enemy. We become lunch for the enemy. That is why I'm awakening us, gentlemen and ladies. The Bible says, fear not, fear not. Regardless of how loud the roar is, regardless of how strong the roar is, regardless of how scary it is, fear not. Yes, it's true that as human beings, there has to be a level when we are like, oh, I'm scared. But I want to tell you this. There is a difference between being careful and walking in fear. I can be careful with my health and mask up and wash my hands and social distance. That is what I call being careful. But fear means I'm negative about everything. Fear will paralyze you and it will stop you from doing the things that you really can do even when you're safe. When you're fearful, they can even open your prison door and you stay in prison. Fear is a bondage. Fear is a spirit. You can't wash it away with sanitizer. <laughs> you can't eat medicine for fear. <laughs> it's something that you catch. Fear is contagious. It's, it's something that you catch from the atmosphere, from the environment that you are in. Just as faith comes by hearing the word of God, fear comes from us hearing the roar of the enemy. Because the roar of the enemy is outside. But the word of God comes in a still, small voice. So we all have to have a quiet place where we drink from. We all have to have a quiet place where we eat from. The devil loves publicity. The devil loves advertisement. He never does anything in silence. He advertises it. That is why when something bad happens to you, someone is always there to inform you. Do you know why it's always the bad news coming to us? It's because the devil wants to hold us as captives of fear to keep us in the same place so that we are not dreaming again, so that we are not believing God again, so that we are not thinking about miracles, signs, and wonders. I came to awaken you, church. Now is the time for us to rise up. We have a weapon that the world does not have. That is faith in our God. I want you to rise up. Fear not, fear not, for I am with you, says the Lord. Fear not, for I am with you, says the Lord. And you know what? When we look at people whom we think are more powerful than us, falling sick. When we look at others whom we think are more effective than us, falling sick. Then we say, oh, I'm already finished. I can't make it. I'm already dead. Let me tell you. Let me tell you, we can still rise up. A thousand may fall on your side and 10,000 on your other side, but you have to continue confessing and believing it will not come near you. I love these three guys that we read about in the Bible. In Daniel chapter 3, starting with verse 15 to verse 18. It says, now when you hear the sound of the horn, the flute, zither, lyre, harp, pipe and all kinds of music if you are ready to fall down and worship the image I made very good but if you do not worship it you will be thrown immediately into a blazing furnace then what God will be able to rescue you from my hand Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego replied to him King Nebuchadnezzar we do not need to defend ourselves before you in this matter if we are thrown into the blazing furnace, the God we serve is able to deliver us from it. And he will deliver us from your majesty's hand. But even if he does not, and I love this, even if he does not, and they add that but, but even if he does not, we want you to know, your majesty, that we will not serve your gods or worship the image of gold that you have set up. 
King Nebuchadnezzar set up this majestic image and many historians say it was an image of himself and placed it on the plain of Dura and he ordered that it be worshipped. And then he also set up another measure, another thing. He set up a blazing furnace and that was to be the fate of the people who refused to worship the image. Shadrach, Mesach and Abednego refused to worship this image. And then the king called for them and gave them a second chance. And he told them, if this time you fall down and worship the image that I have set up, then it will be well with you. But if not, I'm going to throw you into the blazing furnace. And I love these three guys. I love their response. This guy said, be it known unto you, O king, that the God we serve is able to save us from the furnace that you've set up. He's able. Our God is able. He's able. And then they added on a second part, which is really very interesting. It says, but if he doesn't, we want you to know that we will still not serve the image that you've set up. This is how the devil operates. He sets up images. He sends things, pandemics. He sends wars in order for us to be afraid. And when we fall in fear, we worship him. We conform ourselves to his standards. That's why the Bible says we should not be conformed to the patterns, to the standards of the world. The devil makes patterns. He, he joins wires and makes a system. He joins things together, patterns and standards, and he wants everyone to dance to them. The devil comes up with keys and puts them together and brings out a rhythm and he plays his drum and he expects every one of us to dance to it. Plays a beat, COVID-19, and every community, every society, every nation starts dancing and moving towards his direction. He's demanding worship. He wants us to forget what is written in the word. And when you rise up to speak and people say, let's wait, he's the next person, he's the next person, he's the next person, he's the next person, as though the church doesn't have a voice. And we are all dancing to the tunes and the tunes and let me tell you, church, as we dance to the beats of the enemy, we, we are worshiping him and our faith is draining, our fear is increasing. The church today is exposing fear and barring faith. Where is our faith? What does the word of God say? The world is speaking, but God is also speaking. Who are we listening to? Are we putting it on a weighing scale? What are we giving attention to? Where is the voice of God in this generation? What is God speaking to you? He says, I don't give you a spirit of fear. I've not given you a spirit of fear, but I have given you a spirit of boldness and of sound mind. So my question is, who has given you that fear? It definitely can't be God. God did not breathe that fear into you. You heard information from outside. Your ears brought in something. Your eyes saw something and, and you're scared and that is not God. That is a spirit that comes from the enemy. And now you can't stop yourself from hearing and you can't stop your eyes from seeing. But there is another voice that if you listen to it in your spirit and if you expose that voice and allow it to come out, hallelujah, because from the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. So we are not supposed to speak from the abundance of what we hear the television talking about. We are supposed to speak from what floods our hearts. We shouldn't allow the sound that is on the outside to supersede, to, to quench what is in our hearts. But rather after hearing, after hearing what Nebuchadnezzar said, we should allow the roar that comes from within us. Because the one who is on the outside is masquerading to be a lion. And he's roaring in order to terrify us and to scare us. But we have a lion living on the inside of us. 
the lion of the tribe of Judah. Jesus Christ lives in us. Greater is he that is in us than the devil who is roaring outside there in the world. So when we know that the one in us is greater than the one who is on the outside, we are not going to stop hearing what he says, but we are going to shut him down using the roar that comes from our inside. So we want to hear the church roaring again, the lion of Judah roaring. We want to hear people and believers speaking what they believe. I believe, thus I speak. I believe, thus I speak. From the abundance of my heart, we have to find places where we are still and hear God. Everything around us tells us we are going to die. But we are raising up saying, we are going nowhere. We will live and not die. We will live and declare the praise of God in the land of the living. The devil is still playing the same old tricks to terrorize us. But I want us to rise. I want you to strengthen yourself in the Lord. I want you to find strength in the Lord and still confess what you believe. I want you to start speaking from the abundance of your heart. Because when we speak by faith, we create things. We speak to things that are not as though they are. We create circumstances and situations. We are the church of Christ. And we are to rise in our faith. Because he has given us a spirit of boldness. Each one of you has it. Each one of you has a measure of faith. Except that we are quenching it with the fears that are around us. Now I want you to allow that sound that is on the inside of you to come out. Because you need it. Like Shadrach, Misach, and Abednego. They said, we are sure our God is able to save us. And I'm telling you, God is able to save us from COVID-19. He's able. God is able to save us from date. God is able to save us from anything. And he's able. I want to set that right. Like Shadrach, Misach, and Abednego. I'm not saying God is not able. God is able. But for us to be overcomers, and for the devil not to threaten us, we should always have a what if. We should always have a but. We should always be at a level. The Swahili says mafu. We should always be having mafu. What if? What if he doesn't save me? What if he doesn't save me? We should always think at the worst. What worst thing can the enemy do to us? What is the worst he can do? The worst he can do with me is to make me fall sick and kill me. But who told the devil that if he killed me, he will be done with me? Because my Bible tells me in Matthew chapter 10 verse 28. And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul. But rather fear him which is able to destroy both the soul and body in hell. All he can do is to take away and kill my body. But he doesn't have power over my soul because eternity is real. Therefore, if the worst that he can do is to kill my body, I will say like Sadrach, Misach, and Abednego, my God is able to deliver me. But even if he doesn't, I won't give you devil what you are looking for. Because what you want me to do is to bow. What you want me to do is to bow to fear. What you want me to do is to be paralyzed. What you want me to do is to be scared. What you want me to do is to stop preaching. What you want me to do is to stop praising. I'm going to praise in the middle of the storm. I'm going to lift up my hallelujah. I'm going to raise up a song of worship. And let me tell you, gentlemen, when we start praising in the middle of a storm, when we start praising in the middle of a pandemic, when we start praising in the middle of trouble, then we see the hand of God coming upon us. What are the songs that are going on in your home? 
What info are you bringing? Where has your praise gone? Praise should never cease on our lips. Paul and Silas were in prison. If someone is imprisoned, what would you do? You would just cry and lament and regret. But the Bible says they started busting out with songs of praise unto God. Not minding about where they were. But there was a song on the inside of them that cannot be imprisoned. You can imprison the body, but you can't imprison my soul. And what the devil tries to do by bringing breathing fear on you. He's trying to imprison your soul. And when he has imprisoned your soul, you definitely bend and bow and worship him. But I refuse, and you need to refuse with me. I refuse to bow to the rhythm of the enemy. I refuse to play according to the beat of the enemy. There is another beat that I hear. There is a beat of victory. There is a beat of celebration. There is a party, hallelujah. There is a beat in my spirit. And I I will respond to that. I will move to the direction of the Lord. God says, fear not, for I am with you. I will not leave you. Neither will I forsake you. He spoke to Joshua in Joshua chapter 1 verse 9. I have commanded you, haven't I? Be strong and courageous. Don't be fearful or discouraged. Because the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. The word fear not is not a request. It is a command. He commanded Joshua, I said, haven't I commanded you? When I say fear not, when God says fear not, he's not giving you options. He's not requesting or pleading with you. He's not saying maybe you can fear and maybe you may not fear. No, it's a command because, you know, boldness is a spirit. Boldness can be received by impartation. Boldness comes from hearing the word of God. And that is why right now, in the name of Jesus, under the anointing of the Holy Spirit, I am commanding you, fear not. I'm not requesting you. I'm not giving you options. But I'm commanding you now, fear not. And listen to me, commands are to be obeyed. Fear not, for the Lord is with you. I'm speaking to you. I'm speaking to those sitting in their living rooms. I'm speaking to you who is on social media. Fear not in the name of Jesus. Regardless of what is around you, there is a voice of God coming your way. Fear not, rise up in faith. If you don't know what to do, find a song of praise and celebrate the goodness of the Lord. For the Lord is going to surround you like a shield. The Lord is going to be your protection. The Lord is going to be your covering. No evil will come against you. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, sickness will not defeat you. And I'm speaking to those who are sick. In the mighty name of Jesus, rise up in the power of the Lord and get ready. Receive your healing right now in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus. That you will touch every individual right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Let the healing power of God flow in your body from the top of your head to the sole of your feet. In the name of Jesus, I declare be healed in Jesus' name. And whatever is troubling you right now, I'm praying that the Lord will rise against it. I declare in Jesus' name that your enemies are defeated and you are rising to a new level above the level that you are on. When the enemy comes against you as a flood, the Lord is raising a standard for you in Jesus' name. I pray that the goodness of God will cover you. God will surround you. God will protect you as you rise up in faith in praise and in worship you will see the blessing of God in your life this week is going to be an incredible week for you and the goodness of the Lord will be all over you hallelujah God bless you I want to pray with those who want to commit their lives to Jesus there is no way you're going to drive away fear if you don't have Jesus sitting in your heart as your Lord and your Savior. It's very simple. You're going to repeat these words after me. Jesus will enter your heart. He will be the lion roaring in you, overcoming the fear that is in your world. Repeat these words after me. You say, Lord Jesus, I'm opening up my heart to you. I'm asking you to forgive me of all my sin. Cleanse me with your blood. Accept me as a son in the kingdom. 
from today I confess that I am born again. I will walk with you. I will serve you. And I will love you. Thank you for loving me, Jesus. Amen. As simple as that. I'm also asking you to connect with us. We are C3 Alive Church. And we have four locations in Uganda. Our first location is in Kabalagala. That is in Kampala. The next location is Matuga. It's in Wakiso. Our other locations are in Kasese District. One is in Kasese Town. Another one is in Bwera. Please connect to us. The numbers are on the screen. Call those numbers. Our team will take care of you. Thank you very much. Till we meet next time, God bless you. Bye-bye.